In this video, we're going to walk through the solution to an example problem using the Nernst equation. Uh, so we have a cell, a voltaic cell at room temperature, and we have ion concentrations that are different from one molar. Um, we've got 0.01 molar copper plus two, two molar magnesium oxide, and one molar hydrogen cation. Um, and so we're outside of that range of normal conditions. And so we can't rely on just the standard cell potential uh, to predict spontaneity for this reaction or predict what that potential would actually be. So we're gonna walk through that here. So first let's write out our Nertz equation. Um, so we have that on hand. It's gonna be, sorry. Um, so our Nertz equation is the cell potential is gonna be equal to our standard cell potential minus our 0 0.0592 volts divided by N log of Q. So to solve this, we're gonna need some information. We need to figure out what our standard cell potential is, uh, and we need to figure out what our reaction quotient is, and we also need to figure out what our number of moles are for the electrons in our reaction. Uh, so those three different components need to be calculated and then plugged into this equation to get the um, cell potential under these conditions. Uh, so looking at our reaction, let's um, focus on um, determining uh, the cell potential first. So I have copper becoming copper plus two. Here we go. So we are losing electrons, it's being oxidized. And our manganese oxide, oops, lost it. This is really becoming manganese plus two, that is being reduced. It's gaining some electrons. Our hydrogen still have a plus one oxidation state. Um, so for our cell potential, I'm going to look up our standard reduction potentials um, for each of our reactions. So for copper plus two, plus two electrons to copper metal, we have a standard cell potential equal to 0 0.34 volts, positive 0 0.34. Um, and then our reduction potential for our manganese oxide. Uh, has this cell potential equal to plus 1.68 volts. Uh, so it's clear why our manganese is reduced. It has a very positive cell potential for its reduction. That's gonna be the driving force for this reaction. Um, so the oxidation potential for that copper is really that negative 0.34 for the actual oxidation. Um, so our cell potential, that's standard, is always equal to the cell potential of our cathode, minus our cell potential for our anode. And remember, our anode is where oxidation occurs and our cathode is where reduction occurs. So this is going to be equal to that plus 1.68 volts from our manganese oxide because it's being reduced. So it'll be the cathode minus our plus 0 0.34 volts, uh, which is the reduction potential for our copper that's being oxidized. And when I calculate that out, I get a value of 1.34, that's not a four, volts, this is positive. So the reaction happens spontaneously. All right, so that value is what will be plugged into my Nernst equation um, for this, the standard cell potential. Um, now I'm gonna wanna figure out how many electrons are actually um, transferred in the balanced chemical reaction. And rather than go through and calculate the entire half reaction, um, having pulled these out, I'm going to multiply this manganese half by, I've got three electrons here. I'm going to multiply that by two and my copper, which has two electrons by three. So that way I'm going to end up with a total of six electrons in each half reaction. So that, that multiply by three and two, that would, distribute out to each of my um, everything, so all of my coefficients, which is why I have a, a value of three here in my balanced reaction for my copper and a three for my copper plus two. 
And that too gets distributed out to all of my coefficients again for the manganese oxide reaction, which is why I have an eight for my H plus, a two for my manganese oxide, and a two for my manganese also oxide. Hmm. It, the difference is in the charge on the manganese and the way you name it. But I do not multiply that coefficient like multiplier by the cell potential. The cell potential stays the same no matter how much I need to multiply everything else in the equation to get things to balance. So that stays the same. But what I learned from this is that I have six electrons that are um, participating in this redox reaction. And so that is going to be my N value. All right. I've got N and I've got my standard cell potential. Now I need Q for my reaction. So I'll put that right here. So remember, we're looking at products over reactants. And we have a heterogeneous mixture. We have things in different phases. So I'm only going to focus on my aqueous <coughs> or my gas chemicals in my reaction. Um, the solids and the liquids won't participate in my calculation for my reaction quotient or my equilibrium constant. So looking at my products, I have the concentration of my copper plus two cubed. And then I have a solid and a liquid that I, I won't put in this reaction. And for my reactants, that copper is solid, so it doesn't participate in the calculation of Q, but my manganese oxide does because it's aqueous and it's times uh, or to the exponent of two from its coefficient. And the concentration of my H plus ions to, my, uh, to the, the coefficient of eight. So now I'm gonna plug those values into my Q expression. Um, I'm using the concentrations that have been given to me for my solution. Um, and since these aren't added together, these are just the total concentrations in the solution I can just plug in here. So that copper is at a concentration of 0.01 molar. That'll be cubed. That'll be divided by this 2.0 molar manganese oxide squared and uh, 1.0 molar H plus to the power of eight. Um, and if I, I plug this all into my calculator and lucky for the one that's to the power of eight, it's just one. Um, I'm gonna get a value of, I need to run the calculation, hold on. I'll plug it into my calculator. I get a value of 2.5 times 10 to the negative seven. So that I can uh, plug in for my value of Q. So let's, let's do that. Um, so coming back to the Nernst equation, I'm just gonna plug in the three values I've calculated into my equation. So the cell, the cell potential at non-standard conditions, get rid of that, will be equal to my standard cell potential of plus 1.34 volts minus 0 0.0592 volts divided by my six electrons log of 2.5 times 10 to the negative seven. All right, now I can just plug this into my calculator. Um, and when I do that, I'm gonna get a value of my cell potential being positive 1.41 volts. And so that is my end goal for this calculation right there, is getting to that plus 1.41. And if we compare that to where we started for a standard, um, we had a standard cell potential of 1.34 volts, and it's increased. This to me says it's even more there's an even larger driving force to make this happen, which to me makes sense because the, the manganese oxide, which has such a positive cell potential, and so it's really the driving force of this reaction, has increased its concentration to two from one molar, while our copper has been decreased. And so that change in concentration, where now I have a, a, a larger concentration of these manganese oxide ions that want to be reduced and a lower concentration of uh, copper plus two, that drives, like there's a, a driving force to make the copper metal become more copper plus two to increase that concentration to more closely match the manganese oxide, uh, which is a really nice segue into our next section, which is gonna be about concentration cells.